Okay, well, um, thanks for thanks for being here. Um, this is actually the first tour that I've given of our uh, chemistry island, chemistry world. Um, so this should be fun for hopefully fun for everybody. I'll, I'm looking forward to it. Um, what we th this was the the island that I that we used for the um, Texas A&M uh, general chemistry uh, uh, lab project that I told you about, I guess, a couple of, of months ago. Um, my collaborator, uh, Dr. Wendy Keeney Kennicutt, had been involved in Second Life for um, at least, well, she had been involved in using Second Life for education. Um, for several years before this, and so um, she wanted to collaborate on on the project I had in mind, and and that was great because she knew a lot more about Second Life than I did. In fact, she had already established um, a, a a Second Life island that's part of the Texas A&M uh, Twelfth Man Island, and Twelfth Man is a uh, I don't know. I, I always associate it with their their uh, Texas A&M football, um, but it's it's kind of a a, a common phrase used at, at Texas A&M. Um, so they have Twelfth Man Island um, in Second Life, and uh, Wendy has a, a some some chemistry um, uh, exhibits and information on that island, which is right across the bridge, um, right behind you. Um, and so you're you're welcome to go over there and look around. There's also, I think, other faculty have established. Um, they have some uh, a presence there. They have uh, classrooms and presentations and um, displays and other things going on. Um, I think among universities, I found uh, Texas A&M has probably one of the strongest presence um, in in Second Life. Now. Let's see if we look at my bearings here. Um, actually, if we go, we don't have to go through it since um, you'll you'll see a lot of this stuff in the actual lab. But behind us, what I'm looking at over the bridge, there's a, a big black um, backdrop, and then what what is actually two very large uh, graduated cylinders. I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, ring stands with burettes attached. Um, when the students first came to, into Second Life, um, they had to be trained to do a couple of things, like um, change their, 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 their perspective of, of what they're seeing, um, so you, you know, adjusting their camera. Um, they had to... They, the, their, and how to, uh, well, they had to pick up a pair of goggles. Um, there were, and the, so there were some other very specific tasks that they were going to need to use uh, or skills they were going to need to use during the experiments. And so we had a, a training area that was set up, like I say, just across the bridge there. The training was mandatory um, because uh, you, they otherwise we found they just would muddle around and, and get frustrated and... and Take a lot of time that that they should have been spending just doing their uh, their lab experiments. Um, so this is where they would begin, and what they would what they see and what you see is a, a pretty well landscaped um, environment. The building um, that's labeled Heldenfels Two. Heldenfels is the the lab uh, building that that is actually on the Texas A&M campus where they teach their, their general chemistry labs. Um, this is the second uh, virtual rendition of that. It looks nothing like the, uh, like the, the, the real building. Um, Wendy specifically asked the designers to make something that looked attractive. I guess the, the, the one on Texas A&M, which I've never visited, but the one on Texas A&M is, is, I guess, an example of, of, brutalist architecture. It's very um, square and functional and could probably withstand, you know, a frontal assault by military 
Mint or something. So um, this is a much more attractive building. Um, and then if you go, you can go around the building. There's like hills behind it. There's actually a couple of displays. Um, I will mention Wendy has a, <laughs> set up a display for her watercolors. Um, she's a really good artist. Um, as well as a chemist and educator. Um, so actually, if you go behind, you can see some of her uh, picture uh, version, virtual versions of her watercolors, um, which is pretty neat. But we really wanted a, a nice, attractive area for students to to come, you know, to be in, even though they spent about probably two minutes um, in in the landscape portion. They spent almost all their time actually in the, the chemistry lab itself, um, which is where we can go now. Um, there's two ways to get there. If you have the HUD, you can click on the little home key, and it will take you into the chemistry uh, lab room, or at least the, you might say, the, the, the starting point for the lab. So you can do that. Um, or you can do it the old-fashioned way and just sort of walk there. Um, it's through the doors and to the right. If you go into the building, you'll see that there's a lot more to the building than just the chemistry uh, lab itself. Again, we wanted to make this sort of an attractive place for students to, to congregate. Um, I don't know that they actually did congregate very much. Um, you know, they were here for a class after all. Um, but it does look nice, and if you can wander through it, and there's some some rooms and there's a coffee bar and some other things. Um, so if you want to meet me next in the chemistry lab again by uh, clicking on the home button on the HUD or you can just follow me and we'll go to the uh, go into the lab right now. So it's just through these doors. And to the right. Um, but like a, like a real chemistry lab, don't touch anything just yet. Um, I don't want you to disappear and be teleported away before you're supposed to be. Okay, I assume everybody is here. Um, so the outside of the building, or the rest of the building, is is a uh, you know a, a new version of their their uh, the actual chemistry uh, building at Texas A and M. But this room was made specifically to be as authentic uh, as an authentic replica of the actual chemistry lab. Um, we we really wanted students to feel sort of comfortable, like like they had been here before. They were only doing two lab experiments in Second Life, but wanted we didn't want them to have to feel to to become acclimated to a new environment. We wanted to make it as similar as possible. Um, so everything in this room is a copy of what their their um, regular chemistry lab looks like. Now. I don't know if if you want to look in the if on the far side um, there's an opening into another classroom. If y'all want to go in there and look, you can. But it's um, simply a classroom where the students would get their pre-lab briefing. Um, so there's some slides, uh, some slide screens set up. Actually, there's still some presentations on display there. Um, but it's it's nothing particularly special. Um, now, the students would come in, and you can see these, uh, what are water molecules, the little rotating red and white uh, three little spheres. Pairs of students 
um, a student and that student's lab partner would each click on a um, would each click on a sphere and they would be taken teleported to a lab platform. We have enough lab platforms for an entire class, um, but once you go to another platform, you'll be I go to, then you're going to end up um, outside of my chat range, and so I won't be able to uh, I won't be able to t to uh, communicate with you. So, um, if you does anybody not have the HUD? Because I think that's going to be an easier way for us to get around. Um, okay, so hearing no or seeing no objections to that, um, let's all go to the same lab platform. Now, the HUD um, that you were given was designed for, really designed just for the instructors of the, the lab course. Um, the students did not have this. There's two sets of buttons. We'll look, first we'll use the ones in the uh, the blue and white portion. Um, there are 12 lab platforms or 12 lab stations, um, which is good because that means you can have 24 students um, doing the experiments, which is about the right size of a, a course. Um, so why don't everybody click on lab station one in the blue and white portion and you'll be taken up there that you would you'll go to the same place as if you were as if you clicked on the um the the rotating water molecule labeled um station one but what is this i think this will just be easier so i will see everybody up there looks like everybody is disappearing it's good Ah, and here we are. All right, so this is where this is where the magic happens. Um, now, if we look out past the edge um, of the the platform, we're actually way up in the sky. Um, there are a couple of things that you can see here. Um, even before we get to the experiment, you can see there's a a, a slideshow. This is showing um, a, the same pre lab briefing. Um, that the students got earlier in the, in the other adjacent classroom. Um, so if, if the students need to just, you know, check something that they forgot about, they can they can click through the uh, the presentation slides. Um, there is a rotating water molecule um, that, if you click on that, you return to the room we were just in. Um, there's, let's see. There's a, a sphere. There, okay, so, well, okay, all right, so next to the water molecule is this little thing with the green button. If I click on that, watch what happens to your HUD. The, the lab station number one spot on the HUD just turned red. Now, if you were an instructor and you were on some other lab platform, you would now know very easily. Yeah, immediately that, oh, students in station one have a question. And, but maybe you've got a couple of lab instructors who are helping out. One of them goes there and clicks on it, and the red alert goes away. And so the other lab instructor can then realize, oh, somebody else has helped those students. You know, maybe, maybe the students had a question, but then they figured it out themselves, so they canceled the alert. Um, so, it's a it, it was a very it's a very nice way for the students to um, communicate. Uh, in, you know, in some ways, kind of discreetly. You know, instead of raising their hand and saying, "Hey, instructor, I need your help," um, you know, they could just click on a on a button, and only the instructor would know that that student or that, that those lab partners needed help. Um, next to that is a, a sphere. If you click on that. Um, you get uh, a note card called Laboratory Links, and you're welcome to do that. Um, it has links to PDF files, which contain the actual lab experiments. Um, the student in our study, the students used the same uh, 
lab manual as students in the real lab. Um, and so this was just another way of making that, that information available to them. And let's see, and then there's, oh, and then the other uh, slideshow is for the second lab experiment. On this platform, there are, in fact, two lab uh, experiments available. Um, we, since the, the lab, since all the students performed one experiment at a time, um, they could just go to, the, the first one they went to is uh, over here on the right, um, to the right facing the, the lab backdrop. Um, and uh, and then the, the next week they did the, the lab experiment on the left. Um, so if, if you're not familiar with what a chemistry lab might look like, it, you're the, the, uh, uh, the, back, the backdrop, the, the, the ground we're standing on is sort of reminiscent of a, uh, of a, uh, a chemistry uh, lab bench. Um, you'll notice that all the equipment is um, all the equipment is above uh, you know a larger scale. Um, that was just to make it easier for students to see what they were doing. Um, you can, in fact, uh, I believe you can fall into the sink. I'm pretty sure I haven't tried that yet, but I'm pretty sure you can. I know students could walk into the the lab balance um, and and do kind of goofy things like that. But you know, if you zoom in to the point where you don't see the back of your head, then really all you see is the lab equipment and it kind of looks like normal size. Um, so it, it wasn't as, it's kind of, it looks kind of goofy, but you get you get used to it um, once you start doing the experiment itself. Um, before we do, well, I'm not going to go through and do both the experiments for you. You can play around with it if you want yourself. But um, one other feature of the HUD that I'll show you is, so, okay, so there's 12 lab stations, and we're on lab station number one. Um, and we got here using the, the, the blue and white portion of the HUD. Above that are 12 buttons labeled 1 through 12. If you click on button number one in the, the at the top of the HUD, the gray button, go ahead and do that and see where you end up. So just to let you know, they are on the other side of that black background. It's a one-way wall, and and so this was used so this we could observe what the students were doing um, without them feeling like they were being watched. I'm sorry, I was answering a question in another window. <laughs> we click. You, you fell to the ground? I didn't know. Oh, that is un... Hmm. I've never heard of that happening before. That's... To a point. Okay, so, well, you... Uh, let's see. So you, you get transported to the back side of that, of the, 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 the black wall that we're, that I'm facing. Um, huh. I gave mine permission, but I didn't go anywhere. So did did anybody get? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, did anybody get transported to a uh, the backside of this where you could actually see people? Uh, I mean, you know, see see the lab bench from behind. Oh, 
Well, um, I'm not sure why that happened. Um, oh, we may have we may have had a we may have had a permissions list that only allowed certain people back there, and obviously none of you are all on there. But that's hmm. Yeah, I, I think that that must be it. Ah, oh, okay. Well, sorry about that. Well, it it is a a nice little feature that that the designers made for us um, that would allow us to kind of stand back there and and uh, observe the students. Um, okay, but from the student's standpoint, this um, that wasn't really something. Uh... Yeah. Well, you. In fact, we didn't. Al flying. It's interesting. You mentioned that we never. Um, we didn't allow flying because it's really not. Well, we really just didn't want students to spend all their time goofing off. Um, and so, um, I, th I think now we've opened up flying because we have visitors, and you know, it is easier for people to get around. Um, um, but yeah, we 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 had turned off flying for for the actual uh, for the actual work. Um, if y'all want to come over here, I can show you some of how we actually how students would actually do the experiment. Um, so this is I'm not going to go into detail about the everything about this experiment. If if you want to really learn about it, download the the PDF um, and and you can read about it. We we designed this experiment so that students go through a series of perform a series of steps where they assemble a little apparatus and they end up f figuring out a, a kind of an essential property what we call the what we call the molar mass um, of a of a particular compound um, and this is kind of a, a just a very um, a, a very uh, important it's an important concept in uh, freshman chemistry um, and so this is but it's sort of a theoretical idea and this is a, a way for them to actually go about collecting data where they can calculate this this value associated with with the uh, the chemical the chemical they're talking about is butane um, and both of these experiments are sort of the the topics were chosen because it's Texas and Texas is big on one thing, petroleum. Um, butane is is a, a petroleum uh, is, is a compound found in petroleum, um, and so they they find the mo the molecular mass of a of a, a petroleum compound. Um, the other experiment on the far side um, is actually measuring the salinity of an estuary. Um, that that is it's another I mean on, on the on the Gulf Coast of Texas they have estuaries and so that's um another kind of Texas themed experiment they had. Um okay so here you can go ahead and people can click on different items and what you'll see is a uh, in well in many cases you'll see a menu pop up and it will allow you to, and it'll give you choices of of what to do with an item. Um, so you should be able to click on anything and move stuff around. Ah, okay. So the uh, when you when you try and do certain things. Um, you might get a warning saying you must first, like for instance, open the door to the scale. So this was a this was an issue that that Wendy and I and the designers thought a lot about, um, and that is what level of detail do we really want? Because if somebody were to say, "Hey, take the lighter and put it on the scale." The student could do that, and then they would know you pick up the lighter, you open the door to the scale, and you place the lighter on the scale. 
in Second Life, we wanted them to really think about what they were doing. We didn't want the virtual lab to do a lot of the work for them. And so I think some of the some of the steps get a little tedious, like if you want to put the lighter on the scale, first you have to open the door to the, to the scale. Well, of course you have to open the door to the scale. Everybody knows that. Um, but we make the students do do that explicit step. Um, now, but there, there's to some, uh, in some of these, uh, some of these steps actually have a, a I guess an important aspect to them as far as good laboratory um, procedure. For instance, you put the, if you were to tell the student weigh the, you know, find find the mass of the lighter, which is a, a first step in the experiment. Um, they would know to put it on the scale, and of course, they would know how to open the door to do that. But they often forget to close the door. And so when they write down their, um, they when they try to write down the mass um, that's displayed on the scale screen, they'll see that it's fluctuating a little bit. Well, it fluctuates until you close the door, and that that's what really happens in a real lab. Um, the the air the the scale is sensitive to a tenth of a milligram, which is not very much mass, and so air currents actually affect. It, it causes a fluctuation in the what the scale is measuring. So good laboratory practice would require the students to shut the door and then the scale reaches a constant mass and that's what they record. So you know some of we, we may have erred too far in some cases requiring the students to do every little thing but in other cases we really had a, a reason for expecting them to do that. Um, How did they move? Okay, so it, some objects move automatically if they if you click on it and there's only one. Um, it, if if there's only one task for them to for the object to do, you can click on it and it will do whatever it's supposed to do. If there's multiple things you can do with the object. Um, multiple places where that object could be positioned, then the students get a uh, they'll get a menu and they and they choose which action to take. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, leaning on the balance table does affect things. Um, so now the students did comment uh, that because the menus were effectively kind of like a multiple choice test, um, they, the, the students commented that this really did make the experiments easier in Second Life than they would be in, in the real lab. Um, and that, you know, that was a deficiency of, of, of our design, um, but it was really unavoidable. Just couldn't, the designers didn't know how to you know, allow students to like drag and drop objects and, and put, you know, with the mouse cursor or something like that to pick up an object and move it. Um, so it, it was just sort of what we what we had to, to deal with. Um, in some cases, we um, in, in some cases, we did include a lot of options, mo you know, most of which made no sense or were incorrect. So the students, in some cases, had to choose from a lot of options um, to, to do the, the correct step in the procedure. But in some cases, you know, the, the choices were pretty obvious. Um, now, let's see. So there were a couple of things here. So we can pick this object here is uh, a thermometer and if you if you were to click on this thermometer, um, there's only one choice. Well, what do you do with the thermometer? You check the temperature. So that's actually not that big of a deal. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to get. 
So I'm trying to read all the warnings you guys are <laughs> you guys are getting. Um, yeah, so you, you got to fill the the tub before you can empty it. Um, you can. They need to know the pressure. The pressure is displayed on the back wall. So that's um, 751 tor, which is about regular pressure. Um, yeah. It, okay. So so Shawa's. Shawa, I'm sorry. Shawa's a. Uh, said limited options are not a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, in general, that that's true. Um, although we we actually had the students perform this. <laughs> oh, Mike Shaw. OK, <laughs> um, I, we, we actually had students perform this experiment, or at least the first step of this experiment uh, on their own as part of a uh, a lab practicum. They they performed the real lab uh, version of this, and we found that the steps that the students performed in detail within Second Life um, help in the lab practicum. The students performed those steps better. They were more likely to to remember how to do them. There are some steps in this process. Um, we didn't think about it at the time, but there are there's there's one step in this uh, experiment where the the lab the, the virtual lab sort of does skip over some steps um, or it does the work for them. And it wasn't something we really thought about, but it turned out to be the case. Um, that particular step did not uh, they, they did not perform that step very well in the lab practicum. So we really saw a strong correlation between the detail of the steps the students had to complete in the virtual lab and how that in, reinforced the, their what they were supposed to be learning. Um, so I think, you know, if, now if we were doing a pre-lab, exercise, yeah, we, we probably would allow them to skip over a lot of the little mundane aspects of this. Um, but this was a complete substitute, so we, we always wanted them to, or we, we really wanted them to um, uh, I'm sorry, we really wanted them to to, to learn as many of the, the same steps as they would if they did this in a real lab. Um, so now we can, um, okay, so you can, if, if you want to play around with this again, well, actually, you know what, let me go through and, and show you what the students had to do, because um, this is kind of a, a clever little thing together. First, you fill the tub with water. Um, and let's see, then we're going to need to get our lighter. Uh, let's see, we need to remove the lighter. Okay, so the the students would have um, recorded the mass of their lighter, um, and and they would have had to do that themselves. The the virtual lab didn't record anything for them. Um, although in the background, there's calculations. The 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 lab did run a calculation. It knows what that mass of the lighter was. If the students write down the wrong number. That's going to show up as an error in their uh, in the results. Uh, okay, so we're going to take the tub on the platform. Um, let's see, we to take our fifty minute fifty milliliter graduated cylinder, put that above graduated cylinder. Um, want to fill it with water. And let's see, then we, ah, raise it to the surface. OK. We then take our tubing here, and we connect the two. And let's see, then. Place the tubing in the tub. Okay, so 
there was a little visual glitch here. The tubing, um, let's see. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. There isn't a glitch. They have to, wait, hold on a second. I'm sorry. Uh, ah, insert tubing into the graduated. Okay, so the idea here is that you have butane gas in the lighter. You have tubing running from the lighter to a graduated cylinder that is filled with water, um, but upside down, so that now when we click on the lighter, we can start the release of butane. And after a minute or two, you'll see, and you can zoom in and see this um, in in more detail, but the the lighter is, once it's opened, the butane gas is released, it goes through the tube, and it collects in the top of the graduated cylinder. And we do that so that we can measure the volume of butane gas that is collected. And you can already see the volume of water. Of course, as the gas collects in the graduated cylinder, um, it displaces water, and so the water is pushed out, and you can collect a, a volume of gas. Um, so they can measure a volume of, of butane gas. They measure the mass of the lighter afterwards. And there's a change in the mass because some of the butane gas is, has leaked out of it. Um, and from the difference in mass and the volume of gas they, they collect, they can figure out, again, the, the molar mass of, of butane. Um, so that they have to do several trials and so forth. Um, so that's fundamentally what the students have to do. And that's what they had to do for the lab practicum. Um, now, let's say at some point you and I were doing this experiment and we realized, oh, you know what? We forgot to measure the initial mass of the lighter. That is a critical step. We can't get the answer to our, to our experiment without that information. We're going to have to start over. OK, so in a real lab, you would disassemble everything, and you'd have to clean some stuff up, and it'd be a big hassle. Here, we have a reset button. And when you click that reset button, the, the red button right next to the scale, I'm going to click that. And it, asks, it gives me a pop-up menu that says, are you sure you want to reset? And I said, yes, and poof. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and then everything goes back to where it started. Um, so it was just a time saver. And you know, while we wanted the students to have an authentic lab experiment uh, experience in in Second Life, we also realized you know they have limited time. And how do you want students to spend their time in lab? Do you want them cleaning glassware? Maybe, um, but. Gosh, I don't know. I think there's better things for them to be doing, like the experiment. Um, I'd rather them have time to try the experiment again to get a better answer, get a, you know, get better data, than to spend their time washing out glassware. Um, but you know, that's a judgment call, and I could see how people might disagree with that. Um, but you know, that's something that the one thing I really appreciated after doing this project is really thinking about all the th reasons why you design a lab experiment a particular way. Some things you don't have any control over, like that it's got to be three hours long. Um, you know, that you have no control over that. But, and in the real world, you don't have control over allowing student, you know, whether students have to clean up after themselves. Well, of course they have to because they, no one else will. Um, yeah, or break stuff. Yes. So we, if we had had more time, that was the next thing I wanted the, the um, designers to do, is to include some kind of a random occurrence of something breaks. And the students have to maybe deal with that. Because things break. You know, you, you drop glassware. It's not a big deal. Um, but it does provide something a little more authentic. Um, but again, you know, is that, but is that something you want the students to, to focus on during this lab time. Um, so there's a lot of choices you have, uh, more choices than I thought about 
or more choices than I anticipated. Um, uh, you know, the, when you're when you when you have the power to design the lab environment from scratch, there's a lot a lot more things to consider. Um, and so, you know, you can make it as super authentic with all the hassles as a, of a normal lab, or you can, you know, have a little bit of convenience um, thrown in. Um, so now, if we if you go to the other um, lab station and you play around with that, that's actually a more complicated lab experiment, both in the real world and the virtual world. Um, there's a lot. It's a little more tedious. Uh, I'll just give you a little bit of warning. Um, there's it's a it's a lab experiment that focuses on very careful measurements um, and you know it, it it's not as uh, I guess it, it's it's well it's just more complicated um, but you're and and that really allowed us to and in that experiment we really did incorporate They need 10 milliliters of water, but they're dispensed 10.5 milliliters. Well, now they have to remove 0.5 milliliters. Okay, they do that, but they accidentally remove 0.7 milliliters. Oh, now they have to add 0.2 milliliters. This is like a normal thing in the chemistry lab that you just put up with. And that was something we thought would be kind of a, a good learning experience for the students. Um, so that so we we incorporated that into the uh, into the lab as well. So the they have to dispense a lot of liquids in that other lab experiment um, to do their titration, but it, uh, it's a very realistic process they have to go through. Um, they uh, they record notes um, just on a on the, in the a lab worksheet. Um, that's part of their lab manual. So we could have had a virtual lab notebook associated with this, but yeah, I don't know. Those I always thought those were a little clunky, um, and for the you know the students really needed to write down a relatively small amount of um, of, of data. So a sheet of paper with you know a pen worked worked very well. Um, yeah, now the, the nice thing though would have been, you know, by having them record data into a notebook, then, you know, that could have been stored and, you know, the instructors could have looked at that data on their own instead of, you know, collecting sheets of paper. Um, but yeah, it, it, you're right. It probably would be a a, a big endeavor. Um, okay, so that uh, looks like 45 minutes. So um, I think I've tried to give you sort of a, a, a an idea of of what the students' experience was, as well as the instructors' experience, and what we were able to do. And um, I think you you were able to see everything, with the exception of uh, not being able to uh, behind the one-way wall. Um, so, is anybody? I mean, y'all have been asking questions, but it's, does anybody have other questions they wanna they wanna ask? I'll be happy to I'll be happy to answer them and hang around. But um, I think you you know hopefully you you picked up on how to do everything. So you're welcome to go to other lab platforms and play around with stuff. All in the sink. You know, mix up chemicals. I don't think you can't hurt anything. And there's always a reset button. Um, future plans. Well, I would very much like to take not necessarily these, well, I'd like to do this in a virtual reality setting. Um, with more emphasis on students 
actually handling the chemicals in some way with with BR controllers or something like that. Um, getting rid of all those menus, um, for instance, would be a, a big improvement, making this a more authentic uh, lab experience. Um, there are, there's a couple of commercial, I was actually just looking at them this morning. Uh, there's a couple of, of commercial publishers that are creating VR labs and they're, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty neat. Um, but I think there's, oh, I think, you know, we, we could do better. Um, so that's, that's what I'm really looking at now is, is doing stuff in, in virtual reality. Well, I, I appreciate everybody attending. This has been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, like I say, you're welcome to to poke around. You know, you can you can go to other lab platforms um, just by using the HUD. Um, and uh, like I say, just um, you know, see if if you have any questions or wonder how we how we did anything. My my only, uh, I have to apologize in advance, I don't know anything about the actual programming, um, but if you, uh, if if there's something here that you like or, or want to learn more how it was done, I can give you the names. Um, well, Random Cole um, is, the, uh, is the, the guy who did most of the design of the, the, the lab experiments themselves. Um, I'm typing his name in the chat. Uh, right now, um, and I know he's still he's still active in Second Life and and other types of things. Um, no, he is uh, he lives in Oklahoma actually, um, near um, I'm trying to, I've never actually met him, um, which was very strange to like send somebody a check for a fair amount of money that I've never met. <laughs> Um, but you know, uh, I got over that. Uh, you know, he he's he's just a, a designer in Second Life. He's worked on a lot of other projects, um, but uh, but Wendy knew him, and so uh, so he was so we hired him for this work. Yeah, I know. I, I, I as although I'm, it's something I have to get used to, or I am getting used to. Um, but I'm I'm in real life. I'm not actually real active on social media and sharing and things like that. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what, that was <laughs> so many funny things happened during this project. One of them was just trying to explain to people at Florida Tech, uh, explain to administrators what we were actually doing. Like, what is Second Life? It's like, is it software? Is it a, a, you know, is it a publishing company? I, I think I I think I just I gave them just enough information that they, you know, didn't ask too many other questions, um, and you know it was the research was funded, so that's really all they really cared about. <laughs> all right. Well, um, let's see. Trying to see if there are other. Um, guess if there's no other questions, then uh, like I say, feel free to look around and look around over at uh, on the, the Twelfth Man Island adjacent to this. Um, there's there's actually some some neat stuff. There's there's an agricultural set uh, an agriculture setup. There's um, some people doing. Um, uh, education. They've got some presentations over there. Um, there, and then there's there's windy stuff that's got a bunch of cute things for for chemistry. So, um, yeah, does Wendy? Yeah, yeah. Actually, she's given far more. Um, she's given a lot more tours of um, of our project than I have. Um, I know last. Uh, she, I mean, I, yeah, I forget 
when the last time I saw her in the world. But she does virtual world conferences, presentations, and stuff. Um, so yeah, it, well, and she's all she is retired, and so um, yeah, that bandwidth may be may be an issue. Okay, well, um, and, you know, if if any other questions come up, or you want to take another look or talk to me about it, um, feel free to to uh, contact me, and and uh, be happy to chat some more. Okay, take care. Bye, everybody.